Hey everyone, welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. If you're new here or you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel and helping us feed a hungry hippo. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up while you're listening today. Today we're going to do the next video in my bullet journal series. And today we're doing the initial setup of a brand new bullet journal. If you didn't see my video a couple weeks ago on 10 lists that everyone needs, it was kind of a preparatory video on making lists and kind of organizing your thoughts, your goals, your budget, your to-do list, your routines and all of that and getting that all together in list form and thinking it through in your mind so that when you plot out your bullet journal for 2024 and you're creating routines and schedules that are going to make you a much more prosperous, organized person who does things with intent rather than just kind of scrambling around all day, jumping from activity to activity with no purpose in mind. We're going to implement all of that into our bullet journals. You guys know I'm crazy about organization, routines, schedules, to-dos, and you can keep track of all of that in a bullet journal. It also helps you to be more precise and go through your day with intent. If you wake up each morning with a clear plan, a clear schedule, a clear routine, you're going to be more productive. You're going to get more done. You're going to feel more accomplished at the end of your day than if you wake up and just kind of wander around your house and wonder what you're supposed to be doing today. But bullet journals are so much more than just a list of your to-dos, just a list of calendars, just a planner. My bullet journal is very unique. So I want to preface this video before we get into the initial setup with just a little talk about what a traditional bullet journal is versus what mine is and how I teach people to set theirs up to be individual and unique for them. At the end of the day, a bullet journal is really what you make it. There's no right or wrong way to have a bullet journal and it can be as personalized as you want it to be. It can be as unique, detailed, or simple as you want it to be. You could have a notebook that you just write in with a black pen each day, your tasks that you want to complete. You could have calendars that you draw and paint and make pictures on. You can use stickers. You can only have a planner. You can have all kinds of information. It really is up to you what your bullet journal becomes for you. It's very personalized. I can't really tell you exactly how to set it up for you because I don't know everybody's situation. I don't know how creative you are. I don't know what kind of things you like to keep track of. I don't know your life, your appointments, how many pets, kids you'll have, if you have a job outside of the home in addition to reselling, if you have a very busy life or a very non-busy life. So it has to be what it is for you. What I can tell you is what mine is, and I am going to link below the YouTube to the original bullet journal, and mine is nothing like that because I've taken the original bullet journal and I've kind of smashed it in to the Fly Ladies Control Journal, and I've taken a hybrid of both of those, smashed them together, and then created the Star Bullet Journal for me. It's very personalized. Let me share my screen again, and I'm going to put links down below in the description box to all of these things I'm about to show you so that you can go through as you're setting up your bullet journal for 2024 and get an idea of what other people do. This is the original creator. His name is Ryder. He created the original bullet journal. His video is four minutes long and he kind of just goes, I did not mean to do that. He kind of just goes through and shows you how he set up the original and how he does it. It's very good for a starting point. This is what I started doing in the beginning. I've also been um, a huge fan of the fly lady for 20 years. I followed her system for organizing and cleaning your home. I highly recommend her to people. She has a version called the control journal, and this is her page on how to set that up. So I've taken what I really enjoyed about her control journal, smashed it what I really like with what I really like about the bullet journal, and then I've created something unique to me. I'm also going to give you guys a link to this page. Um, these are teachers who have really creative ideas. 
This is uh, 55 inspiring bullet journal ideas. And you can see there are some people that get really crafty and creative. Uh, they have the ability to, dr to draw. They have some talent here. This reading log you see where they've drawn and colored in a bookshelf and drawn books and they keep track of the books they read. There's people that make things exercise trackers. There's water trackers. There's um, just all kinds of things that you can do to make it yours. You can doodle flowers. I'm not creative and I'm not artistic. Um, I can't draw to save my life. So I use stickers. And I use just pen and paper mostly. Um, so mine looks more plain. I'm going to show you mine. They have a study tracker. If you have a kid in college, you can help them make that. If you're in school, uh, goals. You can see just some people get very creative and crafty. But you don't have to. I don't because I'm not artistic. I do color code. Um, this is cool right here, like these little squares. I love these. I might get a little more. I might try to get a little more crafty next year. I'm not sure. But I'm going to include all these links in there for you. And then you're going to make your bullet journal what you want it to be. The basis of it is a planner. You want to have a calendar in there of some sort. And you can have monthly, weekly, daily, all three two of those. I do monthly and I do weekly. But some folks need daily because they have busier lives. Some people don't like to look at it at a month out. You have to decide for you. So one of those three or all three or some combination of them, you want to have some kind of a planner system for sure. And then from there, you want to decide what you want for you. A lot of people do the water trackers, exercise. They keep track of their calories. If you're watching what you eat, you can have... Um, pet stuff, kid stuff. Um, a lot of what I keep track of is just stuff personal to me. So I keep, I have a page for ideas for videos. So whenever I have an idea of a YouTube video I want to create for you guys or something I want to teach you or something I see being talked about in the Facebook groups that I want to address, I keep track of it. I have to-dos, projects. I do have a book tracker. Y'all, it is nowhere near as pretty. You saw that one with the bookshelf where she drew those bookshelves and colored in her books. This is mine. <laughs> That's it. I have a sticker that says read and then I color code my month and I keep track of the books I read each month and I have, you know, more stickers on the other pages. Um, I do keep track of my favorites throughout the year, but it, it's just basically a list with some stickers because I'm not good at drawing and that's okay. That's good enough for me. I do have my control journal stuff in here from the Fly Lady system as far as zones, daily tasks, and routines. I have my calendars. I have a future log, which we're going to talk about because that's going to be the first thing you're going to do in a new journal. I have notes from reseller conferences, so I always keep a section free for that. I have a packing list. So when I go away, my personality is type A personality, and I am diagnosed with OCD. Most of you know that, and I'm also diagnosed with anxiety. So when I go on trips, there's a lot of mental issues <laughs> and a lot of worry and anxiety about forgetting stuff. So I have an extensive packing list. Like I seriously sit down and think in my head from the minute I get up in the morning till I go to bed at night, what are all the items I'm going to need in a day? And I do it um, as far as toiletry, medications, stuff for the computer. I put down everything I'm going to need in a day. And then as I pack, I can highlight it or check it off. I use the list more than once. So I don't have to keep rewriting it. So you can see some have squares where I've checked it off. That was probably my first trip of the year, uh, which was camp listing party. And then I went to FlipCon. So then it was pink. And then it was purple for the next trip. Um, that way I can reuse it a couple of times. So I can check it off and then just do different colors, highlighters. The highlighters I suggest are these gel ones. But you don't have to, you know, get all fancified. But I like these, these gel highlighters. They're a generic brand even. I think I found them on Amazon. Um, I've had these since 2016. And you can see this purple one still has so much in it. And you can touch it and it doesn't come off on your hand. Um, the package came with several colors. And I've had them for years. And because they're gel, they don't dry out. So they were worth the money to me because the way I personalize my bullet journal is with color coding and stickers because I'm not creative and I can't draw. 
Um, so I do have several different packages of pens. And I can put some links down below to where I bought these. There's a fine point side. And then there's a thick side. So if you are artistic, you like to draw or paint. It's real wet, real thick. And these come in packs of different colors as well. And this, only get it if you can get it on sale. This is like a $75 box of Sharpies. I got for like 20 bucks on some really deep discounted Prime Day. They had a huge discount on it. But they have different um, thickness of pens in there and all kinds of colors. Several of my friends keep an eye, have kept an eye out for these, I should say, and got them when they were on sale and absolutely love them. So. What do you need to start a bullet journal? At the very least, you need a notebook and a pen. And that's all you really need. You can go to Walmart and get these composition notebooks. I think, I mean, everything keeps going up in price. I think I got mine for 25 cents. And this may actually have been in Publix in Florida. Um, but these used to be really cheap. If you watch for like back to school sales and stuff like that, I got like four of these purple ones and two black ones and they were like a quarter a piece and I just save them in my drawer when I need them. You can use something you got for free. <laughs> or you can get all fancified and get an actual hardbound journal. Or you can have spiral rounds like my baby Yoda here. I have a Couple others I've been saving up here. I got a friend's one. What I like to do is look for these when they're on sale. So when I go to Barnes and Noble, I look at the clearance, I look at the sales, and um, this one was marked nine ninety nine. I got it for four ninety nine half off. I got these composition books, like I said, a whole stack of them for a quarter a piece. I got the really cute Beetlejuice journal at Spirit Halloween, the day after Halloween for half off. So I paid like $8.50 for this. I have a Pennywise one in my drawer that's similar to this one. I have a Shining one that Robert sent me, but what I like to do is just go and when they're on sale, I have a problem. So I'm not suggesting that everyone have an entire desk drawer full of empty um, journals, but I do go through these and I use them a lot. And some of these I'll use for just to-do lists and projects and ideas for videos that don't actually always make it into the actual bullet journal. And I do have several friends that do that as well. So keep that in mind. You don't have to be stuck with just one bullet journal all year. You can have different ones for different things. For instance, I have friends who have one just for their reading. So if you're an avid reader and you want to keep track of your TBR, which is your to be read list, if you're not a reader, a lot of us uh, nerds keep track or some kind of list of books that we want to read or want to buy and books that we've read. And you can um, keep track of which ones are your favorite and you can have charts and graphs. You can do all kinds of stuff. I have friends that have entire journals for the year of just their books or their movies or their TV shows or their video games, whatever they're interested in. And then they'll have a separate one that's just their planner on their to-do lists. I have friends that keep one for themselves and one for their kids. If you have kids with special needs who have a lot of doctor's appointments and therapy, and they're going to have to have a lot of information as far as medication and doctors and information, you may want to keep a separate journal just for your child and then one for yourself. So you can have more than one going if you want to have themes, and that's fine. I just don't want people to go out and spend tons of money on these. I look like I have all these fancy ones. I don't pay a lot for them. I get them when they're on clearance. I go when they're on sale. You can also look at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. A lot of times they'll have a section with these little journals and around Christmas time, they're usually pretty cheap. Five Below has a section of journals. Some of them are really cute and themed. I've seen some that are like for readers or movie lovers. There's just all kinds of stuff. Oh, and Ollie's. So I'm going to cover up the bad word on this one. <laughs> I got this at Ollie's. For $2.99. So you can look at all of the clearance stores and the outlets and stuff like that. You can go to sales and you know buy 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 a couple, have some on hand, especially if you're gonna go through them as much as I do, if you're gonna have separate ones for separate things, and you can even have them your accounting. I mean, it depends on how 
old fashioned, I guess that's the right term you want to be. A lot of people nowadays keep track of most everything on the computer or on their phone. Most people have their schedules and their planners on here. Um, Fly Lady even has an app now where you can keep track of your zones right on your phone. And you can personalize your cleaning list and do your checklist right on the app, um, personalized for you. She has it so you can set it up. I have it on my phone. I don't really use it because I do like the old fashioned, so to speak. I don't know a better term for it. Dinosaur. <laughs> I like to keep track of it in my book. Um, now, as far as like menu planning, I used to keep track of that in my bullet journal. But for me, it became kind of a hassle because I'd have to carry the bullet journal up and down the stairs. And Keith would have to go get the journal and find the day and see what we were eating. So now I have um, this really cute thing on my fridge that's like a dry erase board that has our menu on it. It has our grocery list. I'm going to pull it up and show it to you. I can put a link to that down below too. But what I did prior to me having that, I used to keep track of my menus in my bullet journal, just like Fly Lady has in her control journal. But I did go and buy this recently. It's not expensive either. So let me share my screen and show you. And they have several different ones. It's one crafty lady that makes these. So there's different designs. I just chose a simple black and white design because that's me. Um, but it comes with a eraser, comes with a marker, and then you'll need more, obviously, if you're going to use it for long periods of time. But I really like it because it's thin. So it's not like those thick boards, dry erase boards that like stick out from your fridge. It's thin. It's as thin as a piece of paper and it just goes right on the front of the fridge. And it has every day on there. You can write your menu. You can write some notes. And the grocery list is right on there as well. I love this. And it's right on the fridge. So if Keith wonders what we're having for dinner, he can just look for himself. And I don't have to cart my bullet journal up and down the stairs when I'm getting ready to prepare dinner. And because it's so conveniently right there. Also, if I'm making dinner tonight, I can kind of glance over and see what I have on for tomorrow. Oh, I need to pull some chicken out or some ground beef out to thaw. I don't ever forget to pull stuff out to thaw or get things ready. It's right there when you're making your grocery list. I cannot praise this enough. Plus, it comes with this. What person who loves to cook doesn't want this conversion chart? It's also a very thin, paper-thin magnet that goes on the fridge. So that's what I do with that. I mean, there's been several things that I used to keep track of in here that I kind of have adapted over the years. Um, but it's not so much to go to my phone. Like I said, I have the Fly Lady app. I don't really use it. I like having stuff that I can physically write down and look at. Not everyone's like that. So keep that in mind when you're creating your bullet journal as well. You may not keep track as much in here as you do on here. Um, and actually, my rotating menu is a spreadsheet. So, you know, you have to think what you want to do for you. I like most of my stuff here. I like to write stuff down. Um, so now we're going to get into the initial setup of a brand new bullet journal. And whether you've had one before or not, this is a good review, a good refresher. Your very first page is going to be a future log. Why do we do a future log? I don't know why I smirked at you. We're going to do a future log, smirk, because I love bullet journals and I get really excited. Um, the reason I do a future log personally is because I do not set up an entire year of my calendars at a time. You can if you'd like. I mean, it is up to you. If you want to sit down with a movie and your pens and your markers and your rulers and your stickers and your whatevers, and you want to set up the entire year 2024 calendars and weekly and daily, whatever you want to do, you can. I don't. I go about three months out at a time. I usually watch at the end of December, I will sit and watch Home Alone and maybe Home Alone 2 and do some setup for 2024. And I might go out six months if I'm feeling really froggy, but I never go out the whole year. So if I set my 2024 from January through March, anything that's going to be happening in April or the rest of the year, I don't have anywhere to write it down yet. I don't have that calendar set up. 
So I need to put it in the future log. This is also going to be the place where you're going to put birthdays, anniversaries, repeating things that happen year after year, doctor's appointments, anything that's going to happen that you don't have a month for or a week for yet. Does that make sense so far? And we did do a list last week on that video of things you want to remember. So your very first page. Now I'm going to give you full disclosure. This is my 2023 bullet journal, but I've only used that much of this journal. I have this many blank pages left, right? So I don't want to waste a journal. So I'm going to go ahead and start all over and do 2024 in the back half of this book. And if I run out of room, it's fine. I can start a new one. That's the other lovely thing about bullet journals. You can have several years in one. You can have half a year in one and another half of the year. I have a friend who uses four every year. She uses one for every quarter and she uses every single page because she keeps track of so much and does so much. Um, but I didn't want to just like tuck this away with having only used like half of this book. And if I run out of pages before the end of 24, like I said, I'll just start a new one. It's fine. So your very first page is going to be your future lock. I have one there. And when I started this for 2023, I had one, my book got wet there. And as I add calendar pages and um, add things to the calendar, I just cross them off. So your first page is going to be your future log. Then you're going to have your index. I usually leave myself two full pages for an index and then draw a line down the middle. So you would end up with four pages. And I will just continue this for 2024. So on page 143, I have future log. I should actually put 2024 there and the years here. But I've already started the first three months for 2024. And I had everything from 23 there. So your second two pages should be indexed. And they're not going to be numbered. And your future page is not going to be numbered. Why do you number pages? Because bullet journals get convoluted, jumbled up. Um, you're going to have January, February, March, and then you're going to have weeklies and dailies and then zones and then a book list. And then you're going to go back and do April, May, June. And then you're going to have uh, your more to-do lists and more project ideas and more reading lists. It just gets all mixed up. And that's the point of a bullet journal that you just add things as you think of them or as you need to, or you saved yourself three pages for books you've read and you read more than that. And you need to add more. And that is why you keep an index. Your future log and your index are going to be your first three pages. And then you're going to start numbering your pages. This is how I set up my monthly. I know my bow journal got wet. That's the simplest, simplest way to do it. But you can draw a calendar and make the squares. You can go online and print out a little tiny calendar and tape it or paste it in. You can go on Etsy and they have special sheets. People make special bullet journal sheets that you can buy and paste in. I just do it very simply. I don't really use the monthly that much. It's almost like a secondary feature log. So if I think of something that I want in February or need to do in February and make an appointment, I'll write it down. And then as I go through my weeklies, I'll do that. So you do want to start numbering your pages and keeping track in your index at this point. So you would put page one, January, page two, whatever, February, however you're going to do it. I do a couple of months and then I go into my weeklies. You can do the month of January and then the weeks or days separately and then February. Again, it's very personalized. So you have to set it up how you want to. I change mine several times a year. I come up with different ways to do things. I used to just write my weeks out like that, just kind of color coded. And about halfway through the year, I saw my friend's bullet journal and I liked the way she did it better. So I started drawing squares. And now this year, I think I might go January and then all the weeks, February and then all the week. So I might be changing things up again. And that's fine. Keep changing. Find what works for you. So what I always say to people with your initial setup, do a couple of months, 
into the next year and then sit and think of what else you want in your journal and make pages for it and put it in your index and number your pages. Don't have to sit here and number your whole book because you'll be here all day. I only number pages as I need to or as I use them. I add a page number and I add it to the index and it can be completely out of order. I mean, literally my 2023 had January through April and then the weekly calendars through the end of April. And then I had two pages of video ideas, two pages of to-dos and projects, seven pages of books I've read. I had a page for tax and prep list. So as you get towards April, if you do your own taxes and you don't have an accountant, you might want to sit down and just make a preparatory list. Keith and I do a really good job of keeping track of our accounting all year. We have special spreadsheets we use. But we do sit down once a year and I go back to the older bullet journals as well. I do keep all of these. So I always copy last year's over and then add anything we need. So I can say, okay, I know we're going to need our 1099 from YouTube and our 1099 from eBay. And this year we added Poshmark and just kind of think of preparatory of all the information that you're going to need at your fingertips and actual physical papers you're going to need. I have that packing list I told you about. I have my current medications in here. And then I can just take a screenshot of that to my doctor. If I don't want to take the whole bullet journal with me, I just take a picture of that page. And when they ask me for my current meds, I can just show my doctor. Or I can take my book and hand it to her. Um, I got my routines, daily tasks, and zones. And those are all things I've pulled from Fly Lady. And I do want to make note of how I do my routine. They are in pencil because life consistently changes and you're going to consistently change your routines. Even if you're someone like me who is stuck in your ways and stringent and OCD and likes to do everything the same every single day and all the block scheduling and everything I do, it still changes. From one month to the next, I could go from having Thursday as my photography day and Tuesday as my filming day to having to flip those because something might change. So I do write all of my routines and schedules and stuff like that in pencil so I can change them and I don't have to keep rewriting them throughout the year. I could just erase them as needed. And then I have my zones from Fly Lady. And I was just going to read you my whole index from last year so you can kind of get an idea of the things that I keep track of. I have more. Uh, I have May through... August and then August through December of the calendar section. I have notes from my conferences and then I have a movie and um, TV show list, basically stuff I want to watch. I have also kept pages just for notes for things I think about as I go through my day. And on my dailies, my weeklies, I should say, my weeklies are, are set up so that they are and fours and i can put any to do's any bills i need to pay any events that i'm going to you know just basically like a planner but i also go back in and add things i want to remember so if you have gotten a new pet or if a pet passed away or if you saw a great movie or if you had a wonderful date night or something happened that you want to remember you can write it down almost like a journal but you can also keep a journal in your journal. You can keep a journal in your journal. So it doesn't just have to be a planner and all these lists and all these things that you're keeping track of. You can also go in each day or once a week and write a recap of the day or the week and kind of like dear diary in your bullet journal. Just make sure you number the page and put it in your index. Um, I just like to keep track of the big events on the calendar section in the in the weekly thing I do but these all just fell out as I was talking to you so I have to figure out where they go back in um I do a lot of posty notes and I stick them in here to keep track to keep myself on track I do a lot of stickers lots of stickers I did buy some stickers at Timu I know a lot of people are a fan of Timu their crap is cheap but their stickers how can you really mess up stickers I got a pack of horror movie stickers from them and a pack of motivational stickers. And then I got a pack of book lover stickers off of Amazon. Just kind of look around. You can find like a thousand stickers for $5. It's really cheap. 
or you can draw your own stuff if you're artistic. But I do put a lot of post-it notes in here to remind myself of stuff. Lots of stickers. I color code. So my months are all color coded. January, I usually use like a light blue and a dark blue to denote winter. February is pink and red. March is like a light green. And I have a darker green to do St. Patrick's Day. Um, April, I usually do some kind of pink or green for Easter or spring. And May is my birthday month, so I always do purple and black because those are my two favorite colors. And um, June and August, I usually do some kind of orange and green for summer. July, red, white, and blue, right? So I do red and blue. Um, you get the gist. September and the fall months, I usually do some form of brown and orange. October, black and orange. December, red and green. I just really go through the whole year. Um, but you get the point. I mean, it, it's color-coded. You can tell that's July. <laughs> I have also paper clips. You can get those little tabs. So it's really just about you, your personality, what you want to keep track of. These are very personal. I would say everyone needs to start with the future log and the index, clearly, so you can keep it organized. And everyone needs a planner some kind of calendar or weekly or daily, however you want to do it. You can even have all three. And then you can just keep a list or you can draw and color. Um, but I would say those are the three the things that everyone should have at the very least is the future log, the index, and some kind of calendar. And then from there, the sky is the limit. And you can be as plain as a spiral brown, no spiral brown notebook from Walmart with a black pen and just do that all year. Or you can look at the link I'm going to put down below for you with all those ideas of ways you can get creative. Some people, this is like their stress relief and their like artistic outlet. And so they will sit once a week and just collar and draw or work on this. I sit down every Sunday night because I know that's going to be a question. So let me answer it ahead of time. I sit down at the end of, De at the end of December and I watch the Home Alone movies and set up for the next year. And then once every three or four months, I do have to sit down and set up some more months. And I usually will put on a movie while I do it. It's not like it's a stressful thing or it's part of my work day. It's an enjoyment for me. It's creativity. I may not be drawing and being artistic, but I have my colored pens and I have my stickers. And it, it it's a stress relief for me, too. It's an outlet. And then every Sunday evening for about a half an hour, I make it a point to go through last week and make sure I did all my to-dos. And if I didn't, I can move them to this week to do them. And I make sure that I have written down anything special or momentous that I want to remember from last week. And then I make sure that the upcoming week has everything written in. And I write down everything. Like if it's Aaron day. I don't just write Aaron day. I write Aldi, Ollie, shopping day, Walmart. Like I write down everywhere I'm going to go and everything I'm going to do because that's who I am. You don't have to be that intense. Um, but I do go in like every Sunday evening and just kind of look back at last week and forward it next week and make sure everything's set up. And I usually will do like a post you note of what we're going to do in our zone that week from the fly lady system and stick it somewhere where Keith can see it so we can each do our own little tasks that week. I don't think I have anything else more to add. I mean, really, the sky is the limit. You can be as simplistic or as artistic as you would like to be. And you can keep track of just a planner. You could even have, like, some people put phone numbers and addresses. I forgot to mention that. Some people have an entire section, um, like the old-fashioned address books we used to have. But a lot of people do keep track of that in here now. Um, but you can have one, more than one. It's, you know, one for you, one for your kid, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to put the links down below to the original bullet journal, the Fly Lady Control Journal, and those uh, 55 inspiring bullet journal ideas. And I will try to find some links for stickers and stuff for you guys to stick down there, too. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the um, comments below, and I will get back to you and answer you. And I'm going to be back live in the very first Friday of the new year, the 5th. I will be back by myself with no guest on January 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern to do bullet journals live with you guys. So you can bring your questions. Then you can bring your bullet journals. We can talk about them and do some setup and stuff that. 
You'll be productive, guys. Go get these set up, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.